Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash pro revenge. We start our video with a story in which the OP decided to stand up for himself in a very original way. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. The foreman at my old job decided to be a stickler about punctuality. I get hired by a machine shop as a CNC machine operator. I was working there for about a month when the foreman decides he needs to teach me a lesson about punctuality. I admit I was late more than I should have been, maybe once a week, but it was almost always by less than a minute, and the latest I'd been was by two minutes. But I always made sure to make up for it by staying a few minutes after my shift. For context, this job was 7 to 3.30, and I had a 50-minute commute, so traffic was often unpredictable. After he gave me a friendly reminder slash warning, I started to leave about five minutes early to avoid being late. About a week later, there was an accident on the highway that slowed traffic down. I arrived at work and clocked in 7.03 a.m. I turn around and see the foreman standing there with his hands on his hips. The conversation went like this. You're late. Yeah, I know, there was an accident on the highway. I don't want to hear an excuse. Sorry, I'll make up for it by staying late like I always do. Oh, so now you're trying to justify being late? You don't get to show up for work just when you feel like it. I started to get pissed at this point. No, I'm saying I'll make up for it. Now you're accusing me of not caring when I show up. You know what? Why don't you just go home? I'll call you when I decide I want you back. I said F it and left, not wanting to waste any more of my time on this pointless argument. I called the employment office and told them what happened. They start looking for a new job for me. I get a call from them the next day, and they told me that the machine shop owner wanted me to come in for a meeting. Cue the petty revenge. I drive over to the machine shop, and while I'm in the parking lot, I make a phone call. More on that later. And I make sure to clock in before heading into the meeting. As soon as I sit down, the owner's phone rings and he ignores the call. It turns out this was less of a meeting and more of a chance for the foreman to lecture me about diligence, punctuality, and respect. I get the feeling he was some ex-military CO. If you expect to get anywhere in life, you must have respect for your superiors. I try to explain myself, mentioning the commute, the accident, making up for lost time at the end of my shift, how the guys on the floor are always saying that I'm doing a great job, but he's having none of it. He keeps getting angrier and angrier and finally decides that I'm a lost cause and officially fires me. I look him in the eye with a crap-eating grin on my face chuckling. Foreman, you think this is funny? Me. Yep. I turn to the owner. You got a call from the temp agency earlier, didn't you? Why don't you play the message they left? Temp lady. Hi, Bill. This is Carol from Employment Solutions. I just received a call from OP saying that he isn't interested in working for your company anymore. If you could send me over the rest of his time cards, we'll start looking for a new machine operator for you. They both looked at me dumbfounded. Me. We've been talking for, let's see, 52 minutes. I checked all my time cards, and it turns out that I've only been late a total of 8 minutes and 32 seconds since I started working here. Since you decided to die on this hill, I thought I'd see how much these precious minutes mean to you. You've wasted 20 times the man hours on this pointless meeting. I hope you're happy. Learn how to pick your battles, Corporal. I walked out, clocked out, and got on unemployment. Never heard from him again. And our second story. Vacationing friends wanting to save money by staying with us for free. Short backstory. We used to live in a different country but moved to Europe, and since then we've gotten too many freeloaders from our old life coming here for free accommodation. Home is currently a large five-bedroom house on a farm in the mountains. It's a small town in the middle of Europe, so it's super peaceful, but we're still close enough to the capital city and other hubs. We used to live in a big city in another country and still have lots of family and friends there. We've been here close to 20 years now, and in those first few years, we'd get a steady stream of people coming to stay with us on the pretext, it's just so good to see you again. I'm not kidding. Between June and the end of August, we'd have one group leave and another arrive. Hospitality being what it is, we never asked these people to pay for their entire stay, and they never offered. The first year was bearable, but after three or four years of this, we're over it. These freeloading leeches had other family and friends within a few hours of us, and we heard from some of these people that these freeloaders planned their European itinerary according to where they could stay and eat for free, consistently abusing our culture of hospitality. 
About three or four years into being a free B&B, &B, news got back to us about how cheap we are. We're a family of five, so when you get another entire family that comes in, that's a whole lot of mouths to feed. Often we'd cook up a large pot of meat and vegetable stew with homemade bread or a large roast. We'd also try to take our guests to a local attraction. So imagine when the news gets back that we crammed their whole family into one room, gave them crappy food, and took them to boring places. There were also complaints by some that they left our house hungry. One family went as far as to have lost a valuable piece of digital gear and accused my kids of stealing it. They later found it in the car of another friend, but didn't bother apologizing for the accusations. Not all of our out-of-town guests were bad, though. These are the ones that have been invited to come back. The rest have never been invited back, and if they do call, we ask them if we can make a reservation for them at a local hotel. I'm so sick of kicking one or more of my kids out of their rooms to accommodate choosing beggars, then have their crap all over my house. They take all your hospitality and expect more. They have the nerve to complain that you don't offer enough food. We don't have the right drinks. Hardly ever buy soda or snacks. Go outside and pick some fresh fruit. And that it's boring here. Needless to say, ever since we're no longer available as a free destination, we're the ones being called cheapskates by the choosing beggars who come to Europe and not pay a single night's accommodation in a hotel because they look for suckers to take them in for free. We don't care, though, as long as they don't come here. Wow. I can't even imagine complaining about someone opening their home to you for free, feeding you for free, and then going behind their backs to complain about it. Bunch of ungrateful a-holes. And our next story. Won't pay for my coffee? How about a hotel room, three-course meal, and breakfast? I used to work for a company in the UK based in London, but with regular travel all around the country. We had very long hours and were required to be on site when work began at 7.30 a.m., but you could be hundreds of miles away. You were allowed to stay away, but you had to get approval from a senior manager, usually only agreed through gritted teeth because of the difficult expenses policy and the wrath of the senior manager who approved the expenses. More on this guy soon. I used to get up early, commute all around the country, often doing two to three hours in the car at a time, most often stopping to fuel the car or just have a break, usually grabbing some breakfast and a coffee because I was often leaving the house before it was palatable to eat breakfast. I was young and conscientious. I would buy my own breakfast, but buy a coffee separately and keep the receipt for expenses usually a five pound breakfast and a three pound coffee. Our expenses policy allowed me to put the whole lot on expenses, but I was conscientious. Anyway, after months of this, I submit my expense claim. My immediate manager approves it without batting an eyelid as he can see the addresses on the receipts and the timestamps. So once a manager has approved it, the expenses would go to one senior manager to approve for maybe two to 300 claims a week, major trust issues and seriously backwards. One morning, early at head office, the senior manager comes into my office and tells me to follow him. I follow him to his office where he explains to me that the company isn't here to buy me effing coffees. Long story short, I'm told to stop playing fast and loose with the expense policy, I wasn't, and follow the rules. Here's the malicious compliance. Speaking to HR, they had a policy about work-related driving and EU working time directive, which meant that all the early starts and late finishes had to stop immediately because it was breaching policy and law. So the next time I had to be on site for 7.30 and was two to three hours away, I stayed at a hotel the night before, three-course meal and breakfast all in line with the expense policy and working time policies. This continued for about a month, because you can only submit expenses for payment in the last week before payday. My expenses went from 100 pounds a month to 1,000 pounds a month. Expenses submitted, manager approved, sent to senior manager. I get a phone call to come to HQ the next day to talk with the senior manager in HR. The following day I attend, get an absolute roasting. What the F did I say? Who do you think you are? When I could get a word in, I explained how I was traveling in line with company policy health and safety legislation, whilst also complying with the expense policy to the letter. HR confirmed, nothing he could do. Needless to say, the policy was changed some months later. I felt much better because I was well-rested, fed, and working the hours I was being paid for. Nice. It's ridiculous for companies not to realize what exactly they're asking their employees to do. And our last story. 
Shoe company loses much more than my business. Several years ago, I bought a pair of shoes from a retailer that was primarily online. Once I received my shoes, I wore them around my house to try them out. They weren't comfortable, so I returned them. Apparently, that use created a micro bend in the leather, which made their appearance slightly less than brand new. They told me they were refusing to refund my money for the shoes. I went back and forth with them for a few days, and they kept refusing to refund my money, but did offer to mail me back the shoes I couldn't wear because they were poor quality and hurt my feet. Eventually, I contacted PayPal, providing my tracking number for the return, and my money was returned. Here's the fun part. While going through this drama, I discussed the situation with one of my good friends. About a month after this incident, she texts me a picture of a shoebox and asks, Is this the brand that wouldn't refund your return? I answer in the affirmative, to which she replies, You tell them your friend works in the second biggest REI in the country, where footwear is the top-selling department, and I'm telling every customer I see not to buy their shoes. I didn't end up telling them anything, but their brand is no longer carried at our local REI. Should have just given me my damn refund. I wonder how much this wound up costing them. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.